Thank you for the introduction. Um, so good morning, everyone. As was already mentioned, uh, my name is Harim Khan, and I'm from RMIT University in Australia. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing on two-dimensional tungsten oxide nanosheets, which have shown an unprecedented selectivity and sensitivity to nitrogen dioxide. So I'll just start off with a little bit of a background about nitrogen dioxide pollution, just so we have a context to the problem. Um, nitrogen dioxide has been identified by the World Health Organization as a major pollutant, and it's very detrimental to public health and environment. It's prevalent in our current living environments because it's produced by anthropogenic sources, such as coal power plants and diesel engines. And according to the World Health Organization, in 2016, 92% of the world's population was not, were living in areas that were not conforming to the air quality guidelines that have been set by World Health Organization. And this has resulted in at least 7 million deaths every year. So some of the adverse effects that we see to the health include irritation to the respiratory system, difficulty in breathing, and these effects are essentially seen more in asthmatic patients or children or elderly. And some of the effects on the environment include formation of photochemical smog, acid rain, and formation of ozone. And all of these facts actually indicate the evident need to reduce nitrogen dioxide emissions. And I'm sure some of you have also heard of the Volkswagen scandal. And a step towards informing decision-making and mitigating effects of this pollutant are need the utility of reliable nitrogen dioxide sensing technologies. So I'm just going to quickly go through the current sensing technologies that exist. And these can be broadly categorized into optical, electrochemical, chemiresistor based on the mechanisms that are being used. Uh, optical is very good. It's highly sensitive, highly selective to nitrogen dioxide. Uh, but if you look at the cons, because it uses highly complex uh, mechanisms, it requires expertise to operate, it is costly, it faces some interference problems, and of course, it has high maintenance. Electrochemical is slightly cheaper, but it's based on the mechanism of nitrogen dioxide uh, diffusing across a barrier and there's catalysts involved, which can get easily poisoned and that shortens the lifetime effectively. And another major problem is they're not selective to nitrogen dioxide. So the cheapest version is a chemiresistor and this essentially works on a chemisorptive processes um, using metal oxide uh, gas sensitive forms. And these, are, these work at high operating temperatures, they require oxygen, and they're also poorly selective, and they're wired to a measurement unit. So in summary, uh, complex technologies are expensive, and low-cost technologies are not selective. So those are all the problems. What is the solution? The solution we're proposing is coupling 2D materials with physisorption mechanism. Um, so we think that this option can be the solution for selectivity and sensitivity to nitrogen dioxide. And essentially what happens is because uh, nitrogen dioxide is paramagnetic, it induces a magnetic dipole in addition to an electric dipole on the surface of the material it is being adsorbed onto because of a mirror charge effect and some electrical resistance change occurs. And this uh, electrical change resistance can be quite easily measured. Additionally, the physisorption mechanism offers low operating temperatures and it doesn't rely on the breaking down of the gas that is being absorbed. Um, and also by using 2D materials, the whole bulk of the material can be affected by the nitrogen dioxide absorption. So if we look at what are the options that we have for the materials that we can use, not any 2D material is going to work. Uh, there have been reports on low dimensional graphene, uh, low dimensional carbon based materials like graphene. And this doesn't work. It gives really good high um, sensitivity, but it has sluggish uh, recovery and it has low selectivity. And if we look at two-dimensional molybdenum sulfide, um, this offers selectivity, but it has poor recovery or almost no recovery. Two-dimensional di tin disulfide has also been reported, and this uh, fulfills a lot of the <coughs> properties that are required, but it, this material doesn't have long-term stability. So the material that we're proposing is tungsten oxide. And why do we say we should use tungsten oxide? So first of all, tungsten oxide is an in-type semiconductor which is suitable for making physisorptive sensors. And it's also one of the most stable materials in ambient air, which was the problem with tin disulfide. And um, in, its strati in its hydrated form, it actually it exists naturally as a stratified structure. 
And this is useful when we're trying to make two-dimensional material so we can easily exfoliate it. And also it's got a very strong dipole, so it's got a good synergy with the nitrogen dioxide, as I mentioned before. And we actually tested this by doing some DFT calculations. And the DFT calculations show us that tungsten oxide has all the good properties that we need. And this graph over here shows the molecule surface adsorption energies, which came out from the DFT calculations. And essentially here we're supposed to be looking for the most negative value and nitrogen dioxide is by far the most negative and that shows that there's a very good synergy between the polar nitrogen dioxide molecule and the surface of the tungsten oxide. So how did we synthesize these 2D materials? There's a lot of methods out there. Uh, the method that we use is novel and facile and it's also scalable and it's based on a wet chemical synthesis technique. So what we did is we mixed nitric acid with tungsten powder and then we sonicated it at an elevated temperature and we eventually got hydrated two-dimensional tungsten oxide sheets. So it's a very simple method. And after that we took the sediment and annealed it at different temperatures. Annealing is required to stabilize the material because we end up with a um, hydrated form of tungsten oxide and that's not going to be stable for gas sensing. And then once we had the powders, we redispensed them into ethanol solvent and then use it for the gas sensing characterizations. So this method is a good balance of cost, process time, control of properties and simplicity. So after we had the material, then the next thing we had to do was of course characterize it. So the first characterization here is a TEM and we can see the images of each of the samples. You can see the large nano sheets, which had lateral dimensions of about 400 to 600 nanometers. And as I said before, we had to anneal to stabilize the material. So we can see a slight change in morphology in the 450 degrees anneal sample due to maybe diffusion. And the next characterization was the AFM. We did this to confirm the two dimensionality of the materials. So the first sample is unannealed, which is hydrated tungsten ox oxide. The second one was annealed at 225, which is tungsten oxide, but it was uh, semi-hydrated. So the first two samples gave us, after statistical analysis of the thickness of the sheets, uh, around 4 nanometers. And the one that was annealed at 450 was essentially tungsten oxide, but it was completely dehydrated. So its thickness, average thickness, is around 3 nanometers, which is expected because there's no water between the layers now. Uh, so the next characterization we did was the Raman spectroscopy and the XRD. The Raman spectroscopy uh, essentially confirmed that we had hydrated uh, tungsten oxide or yeah, when it's not annealed because it's got a hydration peak. And this transforms with annealing to tungsten oxide and those peaks are very uh, clearly matched to tungsten oxide. The XRD pattern showed us that unannealed sample had, was actually tungsten 2 waters, so a, a tungsten demihydrate, and that was then with annealing turning into monoclinic tungsten oxide. And when we further anneal to 450 degrees, we started getting an additional phase of orthorhombic uh, tungsten oxide. So if we look at the gas sensing uh, measurement setup, we had a synthesized nanomaterial, we drop casted it onto an IDE and uh, with, to a known concentration of course, and then we put that into a Lincoln gas chamber. And the Lincoln gas chamber has heating capability of up to 600 degrees. Uh, that's how we control the operating temperature. We also had mass flow controllers to control the concentrations of the gas and the mass flow rates uh, or the flow rate of the gas. And essentially we got a resistance change on exposure to the gas which we measured and that resistance change was then used to calculate the gas factor response, which is just a ratio between uh, the resistance when the device is under the uh, investigated gas uh, in comparison to when um, the device is under air or any other balancing gas, depending on which gas you're using. And the first set of gas sensing results we have here is a dynamic response. So we can see uh, we've tested from 20 parts to um, parts per billion up to 120 parts per billion, and these are the response factors that we're getting, which are really good. Um, and this um, test was actually carried out at an operating temperature of 150 degrees, which is quite low for I mean, typical metal oxide. So it's within the fizzy absorption temperature band, and um, yeah, I think that's it. And it's got a linear relationship. 
This is the second part of the gas sensing results. So where did we get that 150 degrees from? We always first test at different operating temperatures. And we could see that for both the sets, the best response factor was at 150 degrees, and which is why we did the rest of the tests at that temperature. And these tests were actually carried out to the 40 parts per billion nitrogen dioxide. And we've also got good response and recovery, particularly in the 225 in yield sample. So now coming to selectivity, which is the, the exciting point. Um, our sensor seemed to be very, very apparently selective to nitrogen dioxide. So you can see we've used like a range of gases and they're pretty high concentrations. But nitrogen dioxide was at 40 parts per billion and we still got a very good sensitivity to it. Selectivity, sorry. Okay, so in summary, um, two-dimensional tungsten oxide was used for the nitrogen dioxide sensing. Why did we use two-dimensional tungsten oxide? Because the structure allowed a high surface area to volume ratio, and thus the whole bulk of the material was influenced. Um, also, we did DFT calculations, which showed a very strong synergy between the tungsten oxide surface and polar nitrogen dioxide molecules. Uh, after doing the practical measurements, we showed extraordinary selectivity and sensitivity. As I mentioned before, 40 parts per billion gave us a response factor of 30. And the operating temperature was 150 degrees, which is within the physisorption range. So both uh, when nitrogen dioxide absorption mechanism was theoretically and experimentally shown to be dominated by the physisorption with the <coughs> concurrent charge transfer that occurred at a relatively low operating temperature. And also another important factor was the choice of the crystal phase of the material. So we noted that monoclinic crystal phase of the tungsten oxide was better than the orthorhombic. And also in conclusion, the device holds the greatest promise for future commercial low cost, sensitive and selective nitrogen dioxide gas sensors. And just a quick acknowledgement uh, to my supervisors, Professors Lee and Kalanta Zade and Dr. Danka and Dr. O. Oh, thank you so much for your attention. And this is my group that I work with at RMIT, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.